in this video I'm going to go into great detail, very graphic detail if you will, about a lot of stuff. This is going to be a very broad subject so it'll be a pretty lengthy video but when you are done watching it you will be very wise or much wiser than you ever were about all these things. And I'm going to cover about the programmers, the flashers, the loaders, the, the brands, the different functions, applications and so on and so forth. Not only for the bypasses, but also the mating products that go along with these products. So, here we go. Okay, I have my whole desk completely covered with bypass modules and alarm systems and wires and programmers. It's pretty intimidating, actually. So what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm going to break this video down into several different sections because there's just so much stuff here that is it's almost overwhelming for me to even take on this job <laughs> um, so anyway here we go man I'm gonna start with the older stuff the older stuff anybody can understand um, this year I brought is an Omega Pass 4 okay what this is is basically a key in a box uh, maybe you've heard of seeing these things before where it's it's analog technology it's the opposite of what is used currently it's all about CAN bus digital integration now but uh, back way back when in ye olden days this is what we used to use we used to take the physical key stick it into the box uh, we would hardwire it to this here like on most bypasses this one here is no exception except this one here is extremely prehistoric and basic uh, super fundamental what there is is two wires as you see one of these wires right here is going to show uh, power while the remote side is energized and then you're going to have a, what's called a GWR or a ground one running wire. So when the remote start engages it's going to send a low ground signal to this blue wire. This is going to show 12 volts like an ignition wire would. Energize the module, activate the signal within the, uh, the bypass here and send it through the coil up through this loop which we would mount around your ignition harness. Believe it or not, we used to sacrifice keys and this is how we used to do it. I even used to do it before, Jesus, back in 98 is when I started to find Hondas and Mazdas and stuff with this key technology. I used to just take a relay and wrap the key, tape it up and throw it under the dash and give the customer his keys. Uh, but that's how it used to be done. You know, they don't sell like very well anymore, but you know, they're still there. They still have a good valid purpose. And on some cars, like Mitsubishi's and some Volkswagen's and some other ones, you still actually do use them. And you just sometimes you just need them because you're, you're in a pinch or if a customer just wants to get something a little bit less expensive and doesn't want to invest into one of these, you know, super high-tech can modules, they might opt for this. So, you know, that's... I'm going to try to get this stupid camera in line to focus a little bit better. I am getting a new camera. This thing is pissing me off. You see how much it focuses? So if it does that, forgive me. Well, forgive my camera. Had I known, I would have invested into a much better camera. I didn't realize I was going to be making YouTube videos every week either. Um, but I am, so I invested into a nice Logic Tech camera. I'm going to launch this thing as soon as I can. Okay, so... Again, that's the analog bypass kit, which is garbage these days anyway. But now, sorry, this camera's acting up again. Good focus. Now this here is what I would call a generation two. After the days of the uh, black key in the boxes, we used to use stuff like this, which are digital bypass modules. And unlike the newer ones, which connect through much less wires and that gets 10 times the information this one here you would actually have to hardwire for instance this one here is a directed 555G this here was a passkey 3 immobilizer bypass and the way this worked just to give you a little background on that wiring harness you see you got the black the red and the blue that's your power ground and ground when running to turn on the bypass the other four wires were used to actually cut a wire in the car and you would interrupt it with this module and this would learn the resistance code or the transponder code whatever it is store it and send it back to the vehicle when prompted to by the remote start system when it was activated okay so this was definitely a big increase 
And after these things came out, they still didn't come out with a solution where it could do digital door locks, factory alarm systems, some park light, parking light features, as well as the bypass features all in one. So you, a lot of times we used to use two bypasses, one for locks, another one for the um, for the key bypass, and the cars would be playing jingle bells when you when you started with remote. But that's just how it was, you know. Just like anything, anything these days, you know, the technology gets better, less components, things work better. But that's. These things actually still sell. People still buy them. You know, I mean, you can go out and get yourself something like uh, this here, say for ten or fifteen bucks. You know, it beats the heck out of going out and spend spending fifty, anywhere from fifty to eighty-five bucks even on some of these other bypasses like I have around here. Um, had the camera had a wide angle, you would see all this crap that I have around me. You'd be like, whoa. Um, that's why I have to stop this video every once in a while. One to give myself a break, and two. So that way I can organize my stuff again to come back and do it again. Um, so I'm going to keep going on because I don't feel too threatened as of yet. So after we did the analog, we did the, uh, the lame digital bypasses. The next step I think I should go over with is, is uh, one of the two different kinds of bypasses that are current which I brought several different brands, okay? So let me start by going over these systems, okay? Now, all of these share one thing, and that's something I wanted to show you just as an education tool, because most people don't even realize what's going on when they're buying these things. They don't even know why they're buying something, because for what reason? Someone just says it works, or the site says, this is the application for your job to get it, do you really know why you're going to get it? That's that's what I'm going to educate you on. So these are all basically the same bypass with different labels, different names, different prefixes, and I'm going to just take the mystery out of the whole thing for you. So the first one I got here is made by Express Kit. This is made by my good friends at Directed Electronics, which I can't stand. If you know me, you know I hate this company. Um, this is an, a DLCH, they call it. Uh, let me turn it the right way. DLCH or XKO3. Now, Directed Electronics, they used to play little games um, and name their bypasses XK this or XK that. And basically, there was an XK01 through an XK03, which just did basically like factory security, door locks, simple stuff. Then they had the XK04 through the 07, which were combo modules. They did transponder keys as well as door locks and some other miscellaneous functions. So the XK03 is the same thing as something like this, which is made by Omega. This here is an IM07, okay? And you can see on there it has those two boxes on there. Again, this, this camera sucks, I'm sorry. Now this What's in this bag is exactly the same as what you find in there. The harnesses are the same, the plugs are the same, the colors are the same, everything's the same, except for the name, okay? Mm -hmm. So an IMO7, it comes factory default with PKN3, which is Nissan's uh, software. However, on the back, you'll see a picture that there's, you know, um, an illustration showing you how you can upload new firmware onto this bypass via computer, okay? Now, I'll get to the, the loader in a second because that's, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> so anyway, you got this one, same as this, but I ain't done. Now here's another one. This is called Bypass Kit. Not to be confused with the Express Kit. Again, you can see the similarity of this and this. It's the same thing, different sticker. All right. Bypass Kit was kind of like AudioVox's thing, um, which is now called a Flash Logic. Okay, so bypass kit, Omega, we have the express kit. Here's yet another one. This is an, a code alarm. Now, PKUCH is the same thing as an IVUCH in Omega. And of course, DEI had their wannabe ripoff of the same thing, but they're all the same. So you got code alarm, bypass kit, Omega, express kit. Here they go, they keep coming. There's a peripheral kit. Now, you see this one says, and I'm trying to get this camera to. Go, come on, cooperate, you piece. 
whatever. It's, I had another scammer. This thing starts with DL. Uh, PKU starts for code alarm. Uh, PKU is for bypass kit. IB for Omega. Then you got this hunk of junk. BXXK. All the same stuff. Am I done? Hopefully, yes, I am. Okay, I think I actually did cover all these. Now, here's the way it goes. I'm going to take my favorite, as usual. PU Omega. By the way, these are the people that actually make this technology, so don't be conned into thinking that there's something out there that's better just because it looks prettier, it's got a nice colored sticker or some stupid snake on the box. This is the stuff you should be buying. Now, in here, you notice that you have about the same amount of wires as there was in that digital bypass that I showed you previously on the, um, the directed electronics, the 555G. So you can see things haven't really changed much. It's still about the same. However, they did add one thing, which is a plug. And this here is used to plug into the bypass module. So they started to get a little bit better at this point in time. So they're getting there, but they haven't really gotten all the way there yet or anywhere near the sophistication of today's bypasses. But these things are actually still good. I am 07s, 06s, 5s, 4s, um, XK 09s, I am 09s, they're still sold every day. Um, now, however, I wanted to bring this up. This is a pretty important thing. These started to be shipping at about the time when the IMO, you know, 4s through 7s came out. What this is is a four pin. This, these are called data to data harnesses. Okay. Now, a data to data harness, unlike its predecessor, which required you to har hardwire it to your alarm system through the blue wire, which is the ground when running, the power wire, the ground, and running all those extra wires to the car to make it do the functions, they eliminated all that. So basically, you could just take this here plug, one end would go into the bypass module, the other end would go into the car. Now, there, like, like still to today, the, the latest, greatest bypass, which I'll get to later on, will have the same exact plug. Maybe the pin configurations will be different, and I'll explain to you about the different brands and how they interface and, and plug into one another. But still, four wires is still the way it, it is, and it was, and it probably always will be. Now, on here, the blue and the red wire, those are still power and ground. That's never going to change. 12 volts is 12 volts, right? And then you got the other two wires. One is going to be your RX and your TX. And what that means in English is that one is sending data to the bypass, the other one is sending it in, back to it. So that's how it communicates from the alarm or the remote start to the bypass kit. Never change. Still the same. So in that respect, that information that I just shared with you right there is going to carry through to all the stuff that I'm going to go through. So just to recap, you got all these different brands. I only got two hands, this is what God gave me, but I'm going to try my best to grab as much of this crap as I can. All the same. All the same. Different, different names, different stickers, different packages. It's all the same crap. This thing ain't no better than an IBUCH or a DEI or a whatever. It's the same thing. Same box, same wires, same internal guts. Just the names change. That's all they are. So, you know, it's, it's weird sometimes when people go on to, um, say, my website, and they say, well, how come you have a PKUCH and you have an IBUCH, and one is $20 and one is $40? Well, you know why? Because one cost me 30 and the other one cost me 15 What the hell do you want me to tell you? But the fact of the matter is, don't be a sucker. Um, there is good information. There's people like me that are actually still honest and will tell you the, the downright truth of what these things are. Um, See, I'm sitting here, I'm doing this for free, I'm telling you all this information. Um, just steer clear of this crap. <laughs> it's, it's not good. All right. So, so far, I've covered all that stuff. Um, now let's start getting into some of the more current stuff. Um, before I start getting into the latest, greatest, I think I want to go over uh, some of these systems that were kind of like... <laughs> in between so to speak like for me I'll use my own car my own 
my own personal experiences of my video because it's true um, and it's what happened. Say, for instance, um, let me grab this here. This here is an Idata Link bypass. This is the current model, um, probably one of the top three selling bypasses always was and for, uh, as far as I can see in the future still will be. It's an ALCA. Now, Idata Link, okay, is also the same thing as Omega Link. So here's the Omega Link, okay, and Idata Link. Okay, except the difference is, is that Omega Link doesn't claim to make this stuff and uh, pass it off like the real deal, like Directed Electronics likes to do. They like to put all their fancy patents on their crap and say that they made the latest, greatest technology when they've done nothing, when really the geniuses over at Omega and IDataLink have actually created all this stuff. Now the difference with bypasses is, say for instance this one here, the ADS doesn't mean anything. That just means it's applicated data solutions or whatever the hell that they're called. TB means transponder bypass. So this is called a solo bypass. So all this bypass is going to do um, is just a transponder bypass. It does nothing else. That's it. Real simple meat and potatoes key bypass. But say for instance if you had a car, again I'll use my own car, uh, Chrysler 300. The thing is a resistant mobile. It's a nightmare to put an alarm remote start into, especially if you're doing it via hard wiring and resistors, the car will be full of relays and it'll be a, a mess, it'll take you forever. You can buy this thing, you know, 60 odd dollars, flash this thing with the firmware on it, and believe me, that job will turn from hours into minutes. And this thing will do everything. It'll do, for instance, it'll do your door locks, it'll do your sunroof, your trunk release, your horn, your factory security, your transponder bypass. Uh, what else does this thing do? That's enough. It, it, it does some other stuff too. I mean, if you had a fancy a fancy car, like I don't have a Hemi, if you had heated seats, for instance, that you could do memory seats, you could do a, a ton of things. This car, he, this I'm sorry, this this bypass here, with the with the proper programmer, can literally do hundreds of cars, which is cool because it's one SKU you can have in your hands and it can be used over and over again. So say for instance, myself, I have a Chrysler. Okay, now. Fast forward three or four years down the road, I'm sick of the Chrysler. I've, I've been had that, I'm sick of it. Now I want to go out and get a Cadillac, say, right? When I rip out my alarm system, I could take this thing, plug it back into my computer, reflash it with the new software, and use it all over again. How cool is that? Hmm? That's, that's why these things are awesome. But I did bring some other components with me. And again, not to beat a dead horse to death, but these here are two... Uh, RF induction loops. I don't know if I said that well. RF induction loops. Okay. Not too many people still use these. There are a few certain applications out there that require these to be used. But for instance, what happened to me is this. Um, I have an 830i7 alarm system in my own vehicle. Um, and I'm just a crazy guy when it comes out. Uh, something new comes out and I see it and it's better than what I have I get a little excited and I want to rip it out and I want to have the latest alarm right I'm sorry it's just how I am it drives my wife nuts um, drives me nuts myself but I, I gotta have it so when I, when I did take out my system um, I realized when I plugged it back in and I wanted to program my features hit the restart button to see how awesome my, my new alarm worked I found out it didn't work at all and I was like bummed out I was like oh man what the hell so I get on the phone, I call that data link, I says, hey man, this thing isn't working. The guy says, well, the problem is, is that you, you have this thing in your car. I said, I sure do. He says, well, that's your problem. He says, that thing's an antique. We don't use that thing anymore. And I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, six months ago, I had put this thing into the vehicle. And back then, it was like the shit to have, right? He's like, well, that was then. This is now. He says, you don't need it now. It's all about the can. You just got to move this wire over there, change this setting, relearn it, and, and boom. And, and I did what the guy told me to do, and it worked. So, you know, less is more, and that's really the way things are going. You know, just for motion, if you start with the old Kena box and getting one of those other little box playing jingle bells, and then you rip that thing out, and then you get yourself a digital bypass, and that thing becomes junk, then you get into the new CAN bus bypass, which needed this extra peripheral, now all of a sudden the peripheral isn't needed anymore. I mean, there are even systems now where you can just buy 
something like this and you can get a remote transmitter with an antenna and a remote control and literally install a remote start in 15 minutes now i mean there's there's stuff out there that does that and that's it's amazing and that's why i had to make this video because this stuff is becoming so overwhelming and people probably call here more often about how to buy a bypass or which one i should get than they, than they do spending time buying things or doing any other thing really for that for that fact so that that's really the basis of this uh video and plus to educate you and and you know it's good to know because who else is really out there looking out for you and saying hey don't do this do this and it, nobody tells you everybody just likes to you know throw up a website with some links and saying you know pop in your gear making model and get and get this and then when you get it you're like okay well you didn't tell me i had to get the loader you didn't tell me about this and how you know what i get i get it man it's, this is why this is why i make these videos but getting back to these are induction loops um Omega link, I data link again, same crap. The Omega is a little cheaper if it, if you care, um, if you need it, you know, whatever. Enough about our induction loops. Um, now, getting back to this, okay, the ALCA. This is again the the one bypass which does hundreds of vehicles. Okay, I'm gonna just. I brought this out, I made my point, I showed you about the TV, the transponder bypass module. That's enough of that. But let me get into one other thing before I jump off my data link. I'm not done with them yet. Um, here's two other iData link bypasses. Okay, this one here model is DLSL HA. DLSL, uh, all that really means is it does door locks and transponder bypass in one. I'm gonna try to Show you see door lock interface and transponder bypass DLSL. Now here's another one. Uh, TBSL. See it just says straight up transponder bypass. So TBSL just transponder only. The DLSL. This is a solo series. This does actually both functions in one box. So if you had a um, pretty straightforward car, didn't have a whole lot of bells and whistles, you know just the the TBSL will do the job, just do that and be done with it. But if you have a more advanced vehicle and, or you want more functionality out of your system, you're gonna wanna buy this one, okay? Now, if you wanted something that was better than all of them, of course, you can go with this one. And in a lot of cases, I mean, not that I can go over every single one in the world, but the ALCA would be um, the same as a DLSL. Except this one here, the, the green box, the ALCA, will cost you more money. But uh, but again, like I was telling you, if you rip out your system and down a road, you don't have a Honda anymore, this thing is obsolete. It's garbage. Right? This, you can go on using for a good long time. So, you can see I spent a lot of time on iDataLink. I like iDataLink. I have an iDataLink in my car. I think they're awesome. Um, <laughs> now, as far as that goes, iDataLink, I think I've done a pretty decent job of explaining to you now here's another couple systems I'm not gonna bore you too much with it but I want to explain you the differences this here is an Omega link bypass I know I touched on this a little bit earlier in the video now this one says OL that's kind of like the same as the ADS prefix on the iData links doesn't mean anything um, DB means kind of like how the solo one was for the Honda was a door lock plus transponder combo same same ending actually if you look at the two see you got the iData link which ends in sorry this camera sucks so bad come on you piece of junk work Ugh. this camera's driving me nuts I'm sorry dude um, Anyway, this one here ends in HA. Same story goes for this one, okay? Um, iData Link does make and manufacture the products for Omega Link. Um, the only difference that the two the, the two ended four pin connector, like I was explaining to you before, will have different ends where it terminates. Okay, one is gonna go into the alarm or remote start system. The other one's going to go into the bypass. The bypass side obviously is going to be the same because it's the same manufacturer. But this is what's going to make it proprietary to your your brand. Okay. So for instance, I actually brought a couple of alarms with me. One is a Prestige. It's a 
APS 997C. Okay, and I brought this is the wrong side. This here is an Excalibur. It's an AL 1830 EPV. I'm also going to go over what the B means in that model number. Okay, now on the Omega. You got a four pin plug right there in the middle. Okay, you see it? It's right uh, there. Sorry, the camera works backwards. That four pin is where this is going to go, that four pin plug. So, that fits in there just like so. And actually, I'm going to take this Flash Logic bypass and see if it fits. it doesn't because it's not made for that this is the reason why you need to watch this video because if you have an audio box or a prestige pursuit kind of system then you're gonna want to go with a flash logic it's the same exact product that you're gonna get if you bought an Omega link or a night data link but these little plugs save you a lot of work and a lot of aggravation you know unless you know what you're doing and you have some extra stuff lying around just do it right the first time so if you do have an Excalibur, which I have, and I also have an Omega Link Bypass. So let's try it again. Let me just keep my stuff organized to some extent. Clean this crap up later. So this is an OLDVHA. This is a Honda door lock and transponder bypass module. And real quick, this was the uh, four-pin plug that was in the Flash Logic bypass. Okay, you see there's a four-pin red, and there's a four-pin black right there. This is the Omega Link. The only difference is that four-pin plug, but this doesn't plug into this, and this doesn't plug into this. Okay, so I'll get rid of that. Now, I'm going to plug that into the Excalibur or the Omega brands. The Omega Link. This goes right there. There you go. Install, baby. Now, if you want to have an Omega, you can get the IDATA link or you can use the Omega link. That actually does work and they are interchangeable. But you know, for me, if you know I can go ahead and grab and use whatever I want because I have thousands around in my warehouse. You don't have that. So you're gonna want to make sure you get the right one the first time. Another thing is this is say if you got a good deal on a flash logic bypass and you have an Excalibur or an Omega or just an incompatible brand bypass you can also hardwire these things to one another. Just know that and, and, um, as, a, as a side note. So just because you don't have that four pin data plug does not, it's not the end of the world. You can still use it. Just won't be as efficient as quick to install, install it as the, as the latter doing the four pin data to data. Okay, so that with the Excalibur, that's all there is to that. Now while I got this Excalibur alarm system out, I also want to go over something else. If you look on the back of this system, you see there's that little door. That little door, if you pull it down, will expose what's called, a, this here is for a blade. It's a, it's a cartridge port for bypass. Okay. If you don't know what a blade bypass is, I'm going to show you. Um, now blade is another product that's actually made by, guess who, iDataLink. There's also an Omega Link branded one as well, but I didn't have one in stock, so I couldn't grab it, but all it is is the same crap, just with a red package. Now, you see that there's two of these. This one here says Blade TB. TB just stands for Transponder Bypass. AL stands for ALCA, similar to you would have with this green box all-in-one solution. Same thing, okay? Now here's where it gets different. 
you could take this out. <clears throat> now the way it works is once you take that little door off, you can take the blade, slap that thing right on there. Now on with this blade cartridge, all you could do is you could take this, you could program it on your PC, you could put all your user settings in there. Um, say if you wanted the remote start runtime, what type of door locks you want, uh, if your horn uh, steady or, or pulsed output, change your channels, whatever, as well as all your um, bypasses and settings for your cans for your vehicle specifically. So you would put your year, make and model, all the firmware, you would download online right into the cartridge, slide it right on board, and then when you would go to do your installation, this part would already be done. There would be no external bypass hanging off to wire tie or, or mount anywhere because it's, it's right on there. However, if you're wondering how does that wire into the car, does it get done via magic? It doesn't. Inside here, you'll notice there's that harness. Now this is the harness. This is basically the same thing as that ALCA bypass is, except it's got a totally different plug now. See, it's got that big plug there that will go just sh show you that will go in there in the alarm so what you've done is you've minimized all your wiring because everything now is internally in this system pretty cool right so if you're a speed freak you can use the idata link but if you're a super speed freak you can get these blades okay however if you have a blade, you will need to have either Omega Link or this. This is actually called three things. It's called an FL, FL PRG or whatever the hell it's called, something for uh, Flash Logic. A at ADS USB, which is the IDATA Link part number, or yours truly, the Omega Link or the Omega Link loader. Or OL loader is what they say in the bag. This little wonder will actually program all these things that I just showed you okay so if you have an IDATA link an Omega link um, what else the blades this little wonder will program all of them pretty cool this is a must have tool if you do this stuff or if you just want to have you know to do the job properly this is what you need to have <clears throat> and of course if you were gonna buy a bypass from a guy say like us or um, something like that. We charge people five bucks full flash the firmware, but we use that tool to do it. So that way you don't have to go out, buy something like this here for 40, 50 bucks just to use it once and let it sit and collect dust. We would do all that for you. But if you do this stuff all the time, um, or if you're just fanatical and you want to take your time and do everything the way you want to do it, go get yourself one of those. It's an ADS USB. It's a must have. For me, it's must have. And for a lot of customers, believe it or not, I, I find it hard to believe, but a lot of guys just don't really mind spending the 40 odd bucks to have it around. You know? I mean, I'm the kind of guy that likes to just have tools just because he can, but I guess I'm not the only one. So we've covered now the IDATA link, the blade, the AL, and the TV. This here is just again the stripped down version. The blade TV would be the same as the ADS TV in the regular IDATA link bypass. The blade AL would be the same as an ADS ALCA. Or if I if you want to get technical, it would be the same as an OL MDB all in Omega Link. See the correlation? They're all same kind of deal. Um, I don't know if we have to go over anything else with these flash logics, but just uh, if you want to be nosy. That's what a flash logic looks like. It's the same exact thing as Omega Link or a data link. Color codes, pins, everything, exactly the same. FL CAN is the same thing as an ADS ALCA. Again, MDB all. It's all it's all the same crap. The only thing that changes is this four pin data to data plug. Everything else, same stuff. Let me just clean this mess up a little bit before I go on to the next section. I told you you'd learn a lot. You know, I, I don't know how the hell to get all this crap into this box. I'll deal with this later. Okay, so Excalibur, 
again, if you're going to use the bypass kit for it, all of those will work, but the o, OL or OL series or the Omega Link series is the one that works directly data to data. Either blade doesn't really matter. Um, we talked about the uh, programmer, the, the ADS USB. Well, in my case, I'm using an OL loader. I just use it because it's cheaper and I just like to give my business to Omega personally. So, the OL loader. <laughs> Done with that. Now, let's move on to the next order of business. And the next one is going to be the people over at Fortin. Okay, this one is definitely in the top three again as the best sellers. The Evo series sells the best, hands down. These things are awesome. And Evo All is kind of like um, the equivalent to that ADS ALCA that I data link that I've been showing you like nonstop for the last five minutes. Um, it would also be com comparable to a DEI DB All, just works right. Uh, and the Blade AL. Evo All is kind of like Fortin's, you know, main, you know, big dog that runs most of their cars. Um, I can tell you honestly that I sell through about five or six SKUs in Fortin that cover almost everybody's needs. They have about 12 or 13, I think. Um, the Evo series is by far the best. The Evo, Evo All, the Evo CHR. Um, this one, for instance, that I actually pulled off the shelf is an Evo Can. It's a little bit cheaper than the Evo All. But while I got it out, let me show you. Let's show you. Now, look at this now. This plug is weird looking, right? It's actually got a, a three pin plug. They do that for a reason because you can use their loader, which here is a flash link, flash link version two. Okay, that Flash Link is uh, Fortin's variation of that ADS USB, the multi programmer, flash tool, whatever. And their four pin plug is proprietary again to their stuff. And if you're wondering, it's proprietary to what? I'll tell you. It is going to be CompuStar. CompuStar makes some pretty awesome stuff. So their four pin plug goes into their little bypass, like so. Okay. And they can go two routes. They have um, their older stuff um, with like the 4200 brain or the 3000s. Um, they're going to have a four pin plug on them to do the bypass. Let me just see. Yeah, there it is. So there's your Evo plug. And it's going right into the data, the data port on this copy star brain. Pretty nice, right? And these things are very cool. These things, for most instances, are actually preloaded with hundreds of different variations of firmware. So once you wire it up properly into your car and you turn the key on, it just learns by itself. It's like, it's pretty crazy in a good way. So, um, got these wires like everywhere. Now they have some other harnesses, of course, very much just like any other bypass. Most half of the stuff you don't even use, but they give you plenty of choices of how to wire it. So for instance, if you did want it to hardwire it in there, you would use one of these harnesses and of course you would use the regular wires that would go to the car. But anything with the Evo series is typically CAN bus based and what that means, um, the CAN in your car or most, really not most of any car, the way a CAN bus system works is it's basically two wires in the car. You got CAN high and you got CAN low. All right. So when you tap into those two wires, it basically does almost all the functions of your whole car, which is which is insane. But it cuts down on labor. And just because you open up the bag and you see that there's eight jillion wires in there, I can tell you from experience, maybe you only use like five or six. I've even had some 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 other applications I was looking at recently. We only use like four. I mean, that, that's, that's nothing. And what's really good about Fortin is that their instructions are awesome. When you, when you buy their stuff, they give you little cards, like this one here I'll show you. 
This is just one of their standard bypasses, kind of like how the Idatolins work. Okay. It's not an Evo series, but they'll give you a little card like this, and they can tell you. You can go right onto their website, use a little code, and it'll give you all the colors and locations of your vehicle. It tells you exactly how to connect it. Very nice. The service for Idatolink, Omega Link, and Ford are all great. And I could definitely hoot and holler about all three of them because they're all exceptional. Um, and again, it's one of the main reasons why I absolutely despise Director Electronics because they treat their customers like crap. Their service doesn't exist. But if you really want to get yourself a nice, good product that works well and has good support, warranty, and everything, all these things that I'm turning you on to right now are all winners. With the exception of some of that older stuff because that stuff's antiquated. Um, what was I doing with this? Nothing, just don't clean up after myself. This here is a flash link too. Okay, this here is the programmer tool that you would use for Fortin bypasses. Works the same way. Plug in that printer plug looking thing. Standard universal serial port. Plug it right to your computer. You download the firmware. You throw the icon on the desktop. You plug it in. It'll come right up on your screen, say, what do you want to do? You want to update it to the latest firmware? Yes. Takes like three seconds. It's done. And it even has diagnostic LEDs, which is pretty cool because no other loader, especially the ADS USB, doesn't have that. It does tell you on the screen that it's working or what it's done, etc. But the flash link, I got to say, is actually pretty advanced in that respect. It's a lot more fancy than you would expect to see. And the uh, updater, these are only like, I think they're under 50 bucks, you know, but think about it. I mean, if you use this a lot or if you have a, um, you know, a really high-end car and you've got a bypass and say that they're running, you know, say version 1.7, you know, just out of the air. And then, you know, they say, well, we have a new form firmware update coming out and it's called 1.9. It's coming out next week. Um, you can throw this thing into your car and get 99% of the functions. You know, unplug the module, upload it on with this flash link, throw it back in the car, and you have the latest, greatest software again. So if they ever make enhancements, these tools are what you would use to make your, make your good system that much better. So that's really what these things are good for, or what they're great for. Um, and real quick, I mean, while I got this thing out, I'll spend a minute and I'll show you about this port. And this is called a key override all. Now, a key override all, in my opinion, is basically the same thing as that um, ADS TV, I think it's still around, which again, TV stands for transponder bypass. That's pretty much what's going on here, key override all. And they have a key override SL2, very similar. Um, but this is like their cheap one. You can get something like this for like 40 odd bucks, it's nothing. I mean, think about it. If you if you needed an extra key at the dealer, what are they going to bang you? You know, like 80, 90 bucks or more, you know? And by the way, all these systems, uh, this one, no exception, only usually take one key to learn. Not doesn't need a master key key and drive you insane to just get the, the, the functionality of actually learning an additional slave key and learning it digitally and teaching it to the computer. Most of these, only one key. So that's a beautiful thing. And then that's a major problem for a lot of folks that only have one one key for their car and want to get a remote start thrown in there. If you don't have, if you don't want to buy an extra key, usually that's enough to make you just say, eh, it's all right, I won't get the remote start. But with these things right here, never a problem. So um, the, the regular CompuStar line, like I was showing you, this here is their pretty basic one, a CM600S, just a regular one button remote start, no big deal. But this one, like I, I was showing you before, plugs directly into the um, stuff like the key override oil or the um, key override SL2, INTSL, all the, the standard Fortin bypass kits. That's what these things work with, which is enough. Um, if you wanted to use something like an Evo, you would just have to hardwire it. It's not a big deal. It's only four wires. You know, it's not going to kill you. But with the um, later. CompuStar systems, which are the ones that most people are buying, they come in three different variations. They have, um, you know, this one here. Let me just close it up real quick. This is a 6200S. And um, 
this one here, you know, you can use a standard um, bypass kit or as well, you can remove it and use that as a blade. Pretty awesome. All right, I'm going to cut this off real quick and take a break and I'll be right back. Okay, picking up from where I left off, I needed a break. Um, this here is another brand. This one is Ultra Start, another one of my favorite brands out there. Definitely one of my favorites. Good brand. Ultra Start's good stuff. Um, I wanted to explain to you about this T harness that I was telling you about before. I didn't really go into it a lot. Uh, let me just get this thing in the picture. Before I, I showed you that I had a three way, three way harness, kind of like a T harness looking thing. And while I was away, I actually spent a minute to look at it, analyze and understand what the hell was going on with this three-way harness. What I figured out is that this plug here plugs into the copy star systems. Got that so much. And of course, the other end goes to the bypass. Um, but this plug is a little bit different than this one. Not a lot. Let's see if I can kind of show you the difference. But this plug here, the little tab thing on there actually plugs in perfectly into the ultra start okay so if you're going to plug an evo um evo wall evo can evo chr or evo, evo whatever voila one goes into your evo the other one goes into your ultra start nice nice see there you go there's your Ultra Start and Fort and Bypass plugged in one to another. That's how these work. So Ultra, you see what's going on here is that every manufacturer supports their own uh, little thing. Unfortunately, that's how it goes. Um, but like I was trying to tell you, um, you know, not that I advocate it or you know condone either e either way, um, but it's always better to plug them in data to data. Digital is better if you can. But if you can't, or you just don't want to, you can always hardwire either any one of these into each other. I'm gonna put this Evo back together. I got like dozens of these things open all over my office now. This thing cleaning up might take me as long as making this dang video did. So, Fortin, Ultra Start. Eh. Make good, make for good friends. Okay, so all I got is a couple more things to show you, and I think we're just about done. Um, now this one here, again, the brand that I absolutely despise is a direct electronics piece of junk. Um, if you're going to do a bypass for this brand, they have their own wire again, data to data, looks like that. It's actually the same as those... Um, IM series, DB series, express kit, bypass kit, same same stuff. Actually, I've also noticed that the plug just varies in color, um, but they're all the same. So if you want to use a bypass kit, express kit, um, an IM series Omega bypass, they will plug right into it, most of these uh, DEI brands. So the red port goes right into the red four pin data to data port on this direct electronics. And that white one plugs right in there like so. There's how you, your uh, DEIs link up together, just like that. Straightforward, color, color. That's good, good for the dumb people. Uh, enough on, on DEI, it's kind of nauseating me looking at it. Uh, okay, so. Last but not least, we have an audio box, it's a prestige system. This here is an APS-997C. This is a 2012 model, okay? And on the side, you see there's the, the four pin data to data port, once again. This does vary from Omega Link and iData Link, again, by the way. So if you buy an iData Link bypass, this plug will not fit. I mean, you can make it fit. If you know what you're doing, if you had one to like, you know, max to, you know, 
but most likely that's not going to be the case now. I don't even know why I even mentioned it. But um, the four pin plug will go right into um, your Flash Logic kit, which again, I'll just grab one. Something like this. This is the FL Cam. This again will be the comparable model to the Idatalink ADS ALCA, which is their multi series. Um, and that's really all there is to doing these audio boxes. Um, but that's it. We comp we covered a lot of stuff, man. Holy cow! Um, I did CompuStar. I did Prestige for you. Uh, the other kind of CompuStar, Omega, Excalibur. I did UltraStart. I went over that DEI. Um, Dengnary brand bypass that there is, uh, was or probably ever will be. Um, so take it for what it's worth. I hope you learned something. Um, until next time.